STEM science. Oh, hello. Let's talk about the carbon footprint of Tim Hortons coffee. Let's think about where this coffee actually came from in the first place. Coffee beans are grown in much warmer climates, not around here in Canada. So as a result, you're gonna have these coffee beans grown elsewhere and then shipped and transported up into Canada. That means you are burning fuel and that is part of the carbon footprint. Don't forget the beans have to be processed, they have to be roasted, they have to be packaged. All of those steps and all of those different processes take place in a factory that probably had to be built and again involve the production of even more carbon dioxide. But that's not the only thing here. We've also got the cup and the lid. Those products were made somewhere else in some other factory. And as these products are being made, every machine, every step that involves either burning a fuel, using up energy that came from burning a fuel, yep, that's releasing carbon dioxide gas, and yep, that adds to the carbon footprint of your coffee. The paper that goes into the paper cup originally came from trees, which were basically cut down and eventually made into paper. The lids are plastic, and plastic is a petroleum product. It's basically oil converted into these long polymers called plastic. And just like the coffee beans, all of these products get packaged up and transported to the appropriate locations, your Tim Hortons. Again, those trucks burning fuel, carbon footprint. Until eventually, yes, you're at the Tim Hortons and you're ready to have your coffee. Again, we need the materials, the machines, and the power to brew this coffee. Again, if any of those things involve the burning of a fuel, yeah, that's part of your carbon footprint. So finally, here it is, we're enjoying our coffee, but that's not the end of it, because don't forget when you're done with all of this stuff, this also adds to the carbon footprint. Those used coffee grounds, whether you are putting them into a landfill or composting them, as they begin to decompose and break down, they will release carbon dioxide. That used cup and lid that you throw into the waste, eventually that gets collected up and transported to a landfill. A truck that burns fuel, part of that carbon footprint. And yep, you guessed it, even as that cup breaks down, it too will release carbon dioxide. So what I want you to see in this is that the carbon footprint, whether it's a coffee, an activity like a sport or baking, or for a product like a phone or a tablet, everything that we do, any activity, any product, is going to come at the cost of carbon dioxide, because it's gonna take fuel to either transport it, to make it, to support it, to make it run. When it breaks down, what happens to that? Do we need to cart it off somewhere else? When it actually does begin to break down, does it also release carbon dioxide? All of those things add up. And that is what makes up its carbon footprint. And don't get me started on the donuts.